Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and I hope you all are having a great day. It is the 4th of July today that I'm actually filming this on, so happy 4th to everybody out there. I hope you're all having a great 4th of July, even though I know it's probably Sunday. I mean, it is Sunday, I'm posting this on Sunday, so. But besides the point, I have happy faces on my nails. Um, and besides that point, Today we are doing a DIY outdoor video, which is super, super exciting because I have actually never ever done a video relating to outdoors. I've never done a patio makeover, an outdoor space makeover, um, any form of DIY outdoor decor. And I've always wanted to do this. I feel like a lot of you guys probably know that living in Los Angeles, it is hard to come by space or outdoor land because most of the times you're living in an apartment complex where there's more of like a communal space to go to, or you're living in a larger complex where there's really no outdoor space. You might have like a balcony or something. However, I was lucky enough to move into a duplex a couple of months back and we actually have a really really great outdoor backyard area if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel i post brand new home decor and doi content every single week and let's go ahead and just jump right into these projects because i really really love them and i think you guys are going to love them too Jumping on into our first project, I wanted to create kind of like an indoor outdoor faux terrazzo planter. And my friend Peony and Honey on Instagram created one of these and I was like, that is so cute. So I grabbed a simple terracotta pot from Ikea and gave it a couple coats of the matte clamshell paint that I've been using lately. This is the same one I used on the foam cloud mirror in my last video. So I gave this about two to three coats of the matte clamshell paint. And then once I was done with that, I brought it inside, whipped out my paint brushes and a selection of really warm, rich tone paints, which I think looks so cute and pretty and we're going to be using these for our terrazzo keep in mind guys that this is totally customizable so if you have a color palette feel free to use that as well so i uh put down a little bit of all the paints here in my nails saying hello and i grabbed a reference photo as well now i'm going to tell you guys i had no idea how to do this i kind of just went in with different colors and figured out that i was just going to be placing them down and kind of making it look as if terrazzo chips were pressed into grout that is what i wanted to do but something i realized is that some of my shapes were a little bit more rounded than traditional terrazzo is. If you think about an actual piece of tile being broken into a ton of little pieces, you don't really get round shaped broken tiles. Most of them are more jagged, kind of triangle shaped, more squared off pieces. So try to make your terrazzo up shapes that you're adding onto your piece a little bit more squared off so not as many rounded edges as i did i think that will give it a little bit more of a terrazzo vibe however the rounded edges are also really cute so i went in with five different colors varying from light to dark and that's what you also need to keep in mind is you need a little bit of variation to really make that terrazzo pop so my green was my darkest and then the orange also added a dark element i filled in all of the gaps with the lightest color which was kind of like that vanilla cream tone and that really finishes it off once you have it super fully filled in that makes it fully look like terrazzo you could spray on a uv resistant clear coat after if you want to use this outside so excited about this project. This is probably one of my favorites in the video for sure. I knew I wanted to do an outdoor umbrella, but outdoor, cute outdoor umbrellas are so expensive. So I picked up this $29 outdoor umbrella from Ikea and I'm using some macrame cording and wood beads just to spice it up a little bit with some DIY. So I'm going to start off by wrapping my macrame cord around a seven inch tall piece of cardboard I'm using as a template. I wrapped it around 25 times and then I cut off two additional strings. One string we're going to be slipping through and tying a tight knot at the top and pulling it off the template and then we're going to be laying it on top of our other string to create the tassel shape so you're going to tie the second string into a nice tight double knot to get that tassel formation and then once you're done with that you're going to snip all of the loops in the bottom of the tassel to make them look nice and fringy and this just looks so cute you guys i also slipped on a wooden bead to the top of that and i just feel like this adds such a nice little boho nautical vibe and it's perfect for for the outdoor space. So I repeated this process for 16 tassels. That's how many I needed for my umbrella. And it was just very repetitive from here. So I just, again, wrapped it around my template 25 times or however many you want for your tassel thickness. Then it tied on a string, laid it on top of another piece of string and then tied that off to create your generic tassel look as you can see here. Then you're gonna snip all of your little loops on the bottom of the tassel and you're gonna be repeating this 16 total times until you have all of your tassels created.
Okay, here are all of our tassels. They end up looking so cute. They also look really great quality, not gonna lie. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your umbrella and on the inside of the umbrella, you're gonna see that you can kind of slip under one of the strings. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just tie this into a square knot so it's nice and secure, but make sure that you don't tie it into a super, super tight square knot at the base. You're gonna wanna uh, make sure that you leave about a quarter inch so it kind of has space to dangle a little bit. So as you can see, I kind of slipped this one through here and left just about a quarter inch to a half inch of space and then tied my first knot kind of loosely and then my second knot I tied extremely tight. That way it was super secure and snug on the umbrella and it was never gonna leave it. You could also add a dot of glue if you want to just for precaution, but once you are done with this, you can go bring this outside, open it up and reveal your brand new kind of boho tassel umbrella which looks so cute. I knew I wanted to create a lantern for this video and that is exactly what I did. I picked up this super cute little simple one from Ikea and we're gonna start off by taking a little bit of tape and attaching it to the end of a piece of string because this is going to be creating like a DIY needle essentially. So I'm wrapping the end of the string with the tape and then we're gonna string on our beads. This just makes it so much easier than having to kind of fish that string through the beads. So I'm just gonna be stringing on a ton of them because the first element that I wanna add beads to is the top rim of of the lantern. So you're just going to add as many beads as you think that you're going to need and once you have all of them strung on there you can kind of put it on the top and I then went in with just a little bit of hot glue around the rim just to hold the beads in place. Um, I would honestly probably suggest using like an E6000 or something just to make sure that it's very weather resistant but I went around and then I tied the string off on the back side, snipped off the edges and then repeated the process. We're going to be adding two more elements on this lantern that have beads on them essentially so you're gonna just add a lot of beads to your string because you're gonna be using almost all of them so I added a whole ton of beads as shown here <laughs> And I knew I wanted to add it kind of around the opening rim where the candle's gonna go inside of. So what I did was I used a little bit of hot glue and I kind of just glued down my beads as I went. So you can actually add them as you go if you don't know how many you need. But I just went around, added on the beads, glued them in place, and then pressed them down, let them dry. And once I reached the end, I tied off my tail. That way the string didn't come undone. And I also did the same exact process for the bottom of the lantern. And that finishes off your boho inspired lantern. Next we have, I think the most fun project that I created in this video, this is the Gladham table base and I got it in this really pretty pale blue color from Ikea and I had this bucket of cement in my stash and so what I figured I would do to start off this mosaic table base because I knew this was gonna go outdoors was mix up some cement to almost fill in the bottom half of this table base. As you could see, there are edges on this base so it kind of acts as a miniature bowl. So I filled it up with a generous amount of cement and this is going to weight it down and what I suggest doing is just tapping it vigorously on top of a surface to make sure all the air bubbles are gone and that it smooths out and evens. You're gonna let that dry overnight. And then I stupidly wasn't filming when I first started applying the spackling down, but I am just using a simple wall spackle, one that's a little bit on the stickier side. This is gonna be my base to stick my mosaic tiles into. So I applied a generous amount and these mosaic tiles I picked up at Michael's Craft Store. I'll link them below for you guys. And I just created my very own pattern with these mosaic tiles and you're gonna press them in. However, I did learn a couple of things while I did this to share with you guys. Make sure that whatever you are applying to kind of stick your mosaic tiles into, whether it's an adhesive, um, they actually create a mosaic tile adhesive. I just didn't want to get it because it was kind of expensive. I figured I would try the spackling make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. As you can see, mine kind of didn't go all the way to the edge. It kind of creeped up to the edge. And that was where I kind of like had a faulty issue because all of the edge pieces ended up kind of breaking off the following day and I had to hot glue them down. So make sure that it goes all the way to the edge and also make sure to work in sections because the speckling kind of dries quickly. So once I reached more of the center area of this mosaic table, I did have to apply more spackle, but you're just gonna repeat the process of placing down your little mosaic 
mosaic tiles. And this just looked so cute. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern at all. And my mom has been wanting a mosaic table for so long. So I figured this is perfect for her. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry overnight so we can kind of prepare it for the grouting. Now this is the grout that I use. It is white grout. I got this at Michael's as well. And I grabbed a spackle spatula and I'm just gonna be kind of spatulaing that's not even a word. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be basically putting down the grout and filling in all of the cracks in between each little tile piece. Now this is where it gets a little bit challenging. It's just a little bit tedious. You kind of have to work with this and figure out where the sweet spot is because you're gonna want the actual grout on top of the tile to dry down enough to wipe it away but not dry down enough to harden it's a really hard in between to kind of figure out so i used a sponge and i also didn't use the right sponge i think you're supposed to use like a very firm kind of soft sponge but i ended up using just literally a kitchen sponge so i went around i put all the grouting in there i didn't even care how it looked i was like i'm gonna wipe it off so i grabbed some paper towels and i wiped off a generous amount of what was on top of the tiles and as you can see the spackle really held these in place like I was vigorously wiping nothing was coming up at all then I had to go in with the rough side of a sponge to get all of that speck or all of that uh, grout off the top of all of the tiles because I wanted those to shine and be pretty so I had to go through I also kind of had a spot do some of them like with a little bit like as you see here but once that was all done you can let this piece dry you can put it on your table base and that finishes off your new mosaic table And those guys were my outdoor DIY decor slash furniture Ikea hacks. And I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I loved creating this. I actually really, really thoroughly loved making each of these projects. Like they were so fun, especially the umbrella and the mosaic table. I will say that I am no master in mosaic at all. Like I'm not a mo mastic mosaicer in any way, sort or form. However, it was such a fun table to create and I kind of like the imperfections. I feel like it makes it look a little bit more handmade and a little bit more fun. I'm gonna get a sealer for that table for sure though so that way I can seal it and make sure it looks really great when I give it to my mom. So yeah, if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content here on Lone Fox every single week. And don't forget to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. And you can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Lone Fox Home. I'll put it right here. I post a ton of photos over there, stories, behind the scenes, giveaways. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye guys.